Well, this was completely unexpected. OWI had just put up a playtest this weekend for the new Sanction Island map. They also dropped in a little extra surprise that was hidden away, and that is the Turkish Land Forces. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you here today. Please keep in mind that this is all work in progress. Some bits and bobs are missing and it is still to be fleshed out, but there's more than enough to give you all a very healthy sneak preview. But before we do get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more squad guides, gameplay and updates. Right, we will start off with the infantry equipment and the main rifle is the MPT-76, which is chambered in 762 by 51. The iron sights are fairly clean. The depth of field blur and bloom is still a bit too much like all the irons in squad currently. It can be ranged all the way to 500 meters, but the main take home point here is it feels much more ergonomic and user friendly than the G3. Not by much, but it does feel nicer to use. The hollow attachment is the EXPS2, and again, since the infantry combat overhaul, holographics just look and feel amazing. This is going to be a fantastic kit to use in close to mid-range fights, especially if you are a holographic enjoyer. And the optic variant comes with the A940, which, wait for it, has variable magnification. Again, this is another super clean optic, and having that one times and four times option is going to give this faction a lot of flexibility in how they can be played and gives them the ability to be strong in close, medium and long range fights. Now for crewmen and pilots, they get the SAR 109T 9mm submachine gun with the EXPS2 hollow. And boy oh boy, can this thing fire off rounds. However, if you are a gun nut, I suggest you look away for the next five seconds. Yeah, that's a bit too wild. So hopefully this is on the list of one of the things that is still to be finished off. Other than that though, the model is absolutely fantastic and a little note to keep in mind here. If you all remember, a few patches ago, 9mm was changed, so no matter what the range it hit you from, it now always causes a bleed. Other than that though, it is a very snappy, angry little weapon. Moving on, the Iron Sight Machine Gunner gets the MG3, so games are about to get very, very loud if they aren't restricted, because as you will see later in this video, this weapon pops up a fair few more times. The Specialist Machine Gunner gets the PMT-76 with the A940 optic. Mark's Meme gets the MPT-76 with the Keskin optic, which is a 6x and a 12x optical variant, and I have to admit, as someone who enjoys the Mark's Meme role, this is a very clean and nicely sized sight picture. For light anti-tank, there's two options. One gets the RPG-7, and the other gets the HAR-66 Law, which feels much more ergonomic than other LAT launches and has a really snappy ADS time. Another new addition is in the Grenadier class, and Turkey has two to pick from. The first one is the MPT-76 with an AK-40, which fires dual purpose. The irons on this are really nice and clean to read, range all the way to 400 meters and feel really smooth and punchy to use. The second Grenadier kit though, well let's just say, I think people will be fighting for this one, as it gets the MKE MGL, and that is just absolutely nuts. You get 18 40mm high explosive dual purpose rounds and 12 smokes at your disposal. And the minimum arming distance for the high explosive is only around 15 to 20 meters. <laughs> so if you come up against one of these, uh, get ready to be turned into cat food. Rangeable up to 400 meters. Yeah, this is going to be a very, very deadly bit of kit. But as of now, that is it for infantry equipment. There's a bunch of new vehicles to showcase here as well. But for you flyboys, I'm going to start off with the helicopter. And that is the fabled Huey. This helicopter is incredibly fast, agile, and incredibly easy to fly. For door gunners, you get a pair of MG3s, but I think the best feature is you also get the distinguishable sound that is the Huey Chop. For transports and logistics, they get the BMC 185. And as a squad first, I'm pretty sure that this is the first Logitruck, 
with a canopy to cover the infantry. APCs come in the shape of the ACV-15, which has three configurations. One with an open top MG3, one with an open top M2A1 50 cal, and one with a 25mm auto cannon. Wheeled infantry fighting vehicles come in the shape of the PARS-3 and they have four variants. The two open tops come with the MG3 and the M2 50 cal and you get a 25mm auto cannon and the fourth variant is the RWS 40mm automatic grenade launcher. The last vehicle I can show you is the M60T which is an extensively upgraded and modernised pattern tank. Now, I don't know armor values or damage stats, so it'll be interesting to see where this tank fits in, but my guess will be something similar to the Middle Eastern Alliance's T-62 or T-72S. That's all I have to show you. There are a few other little bits, like the tracer effect and NVIDIA DLSS as well, but I will wait till things are much further along and polished, as they were also a few cheeky additions to this playtest. Rest assured though, as soon as TLF are fully ready to release, I will have a full video showcasing everything they have to offer. Don't forget to subscribe for more squad guides, gameplay and updates. Thank you all for watching, take care and I'll catch you in my next video. Good night.